Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Monday, February 14th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The spring game is in 61 days, the Notre Dame game in 201 days, the game against Michigan in 285 days. As we promised you late last week, there are several new Ohio State assistant coaches you have not heard yet from on the show. Today is that day. On Thursday, you get an in-depth look at new defensive coordinator Jim Knowles. Today, you'll be hearing from the other three new assistants, offensive line coach Justin Fry, cornerbacks coach Tim Walton, and safeties coach Perry Eliano. We'll start with Eliano. He was previously an assistant under Luke Fickle at Cincinnati. The Bearcats produced a Thorpe Award winner and a likely first-round pick out of their secondary last season and made the college football playoff as well. Still, Eliano knows that walking into schools now with that block O on his chest is going to open even more doors. Extremely exciting. I mean, one, humbling, but extremely exciting, you know, to have the resources, you know, the Ohio State, you know, behind you to go into any home, any school, you know, and say, hey, you want to play at the best school in the country and play for national championships year in and year out and be able to get a quality education and live your dreams and goals. I mean, that's that's that's, that's hard to turn down. Plus, get developed. You know, I think that's the main, the, the, the key component is not only going to a great school like this and, and having the opportunities on the field, but have an opportunity to get developed to be the very best and maximize your God-given ability. Eliano coached cornerbacks at Cincinnati, but will be coaching the safeties at Ohio State. That's because Walton will be handling the corners. Having two coaches for the defensive backs is something that might be necessary because of the very different roles that those position groups play. But it also means that those two coaches have to work very closely together. Here's what Eliano had to say about that. You know, we, we all have our specialties as far as, you know, I'm coaching the safeties, he's coaching the corners, but at the same point in time, we're a secondary, you know, and I think that's extremely important, just just my time as a coach, that those two entities work together. It's just like when I was at Cincinnati, um, you know, I coached the corners and we had a safeties coach. We still are one. And the cool thing about me and Tim is, you know, a couple years ago, we did a professional development uh you know, seminar in Miami. And uh, so this is not my first time, you know, working with him. And uh, we hit it off and had great chemistry. So fast forward to now, we're working together side by side. And so it's not a corners, it's safeties. Yeah, we have our position, but at the end of the day, we are a secondary and we are defensive backs. And uh, I'm just excited to uh, pull from him and, you know, vice versa. Eliano got a unique perspective on the Ohio State program because of who he had worked for before. That, of course, was Luke Fickle, who was a player, assistant, and briefly a head coach with the Buckeyes over the years. So did Eliano get any insights or warnings about what it's like to coach in Columbus? Not not really warning, label. You know, I, I, I've been doing this for a long time, and, you know, you know the expectations. Uh, you know, and for me, I've never ran away from expectations. Uh you know, I'm the ultimate competitor. We always talk about, is the player a competitor? Well, coaches are competitors too. And uh, for me to have the ability to coach here and, you know, coach at the highest level and coach big games and the expectation here is to win national championships. Well, I'm not afraid of that, you know, um, and that takes a lot of hard work, commitment, discipline and dedication. But I'm willing to get in the foxhole with those young men. And, you know, as, in reference to Coach Fick, you know, I mean, he was great. You know, I can't I can't reiterate that enough. He was great about the whole situation. He understood and, you know, uh, he wished me the best and obviously didn't want me to leave. But at the same point in time, he understood. The significant turnover on the defensive side of the ball is based in large part on some of the struggles the Buckeyes had there last season, so the new coaching staff will give them a fresh start schematically, but it also means a clean slate for the players as well. You just got to come in with with an open mind and really mean that, you know. Um, you know the, the, sometimes there's a reason why you saw what you saw on tape, and, 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 and until you're around a young man day in and day out to understand the habits, the work ethic, the you know, what was he asked to do? What was he not asked to do? You know, how was he in the film room? So there's so many variables that I think if you do come into this situation with a preconceived notion, you're going to miss the mark. And and so when I say it's wide open, they have a clean sheet, clean slate. I, I really mean that, you know, for me, you know, as a secondary guy, I just sometimes just like to lay eyes and, you know, just kind of see what it looked like, you know, but not going in saying, well, I've already pegged this young man, I've pegged this young man. We've got outstanding players here, and I've had an opportunity to sit down and meet with each one of them individually, you know, and I'm excited. 
they're excited, you know, and I know I got to earn their trust and that's fine. I'm willing to do that, but I'm excited about the group that I'll be coaching. Eliano just coached in a college football playoff game on New Year's Eve, so the big stage is not entirely new to him, but still, there is a difference between coaching at Cincinnati and coaching at Ohio State. So is Eliano ready for all of that additional pressure? As a competitor, you want to be the best, you know, and I had an opportunity uh, at Cincinnati to know what that feels like, looks like. I, I, you know, pressure's a privilege. You know, I don't want to be somewhere where the expectation is not to win championships, you know, whether it be conference championship, national championship. I don't want to be at a place where the expectation is not to develop your players to be the very best they can be, which ultimately would be the very best in the country. So for me, having that experience, um, you know, at Cincinnati and being under Coach Fickle and understanding that, you know, every day, you know, there's an expectation of excellence you know that's that's been the norm for me so for me to come here and and say hey you know the expectation is to win a national championship the expectation is develop these guys to be the very best they can be that's how I'm built you know and so I'm looking forward as a competitor myself not just a coach but as a competitor to uh you know roll my sleeves up and and, and dive head first to let's go to work and 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 let's get this thing right Eliano's partner in the secondary is Tim Walton. He has coached in the NFL every season since 2009, but of course, played his college ball at Ohio State in the early 90s. So what has the transition back to the college game been like for him? Uh, It's awesome, man. You know, getting a chance to come back where you play football at and uh, get back over on the old old turf uh, is exciting. Is this something that you dreamed of? The opportunity to come back and coach here at Ohio State? Well, at one, at one point, uh, you wanted to come back, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's, it hit at the right time to get to get a chance to come back here. You know, any time when you spend your college years here at a, at a, at a you know, a, a extremely um, exciting career here, um, met a lot of great people, um, you know, uh, it's a lifetime journey when you're here. You know, you're family for life here. So, you know, I, a lot of former players uh, still live here in the area. So it's, it's been exciting to get a chance to come back to that. It's a dream come true to come back uh, to a place that you uh, you basically kind of grew up as a young young child, a young man uh, at. Recruiting is very different now than it was the last time Walton was a college assistant back in 2008. So what has that, that been like for him since he came back to Ohio State? Yeah, because, you know, now it's such a, a social media uh Instagram, Twitter, you know, it's, it's kind of that era now. And, you know, back then it was it was it was a lot more basic. Um, and, you know, just getting back into the back that, you know, getting on kids a lot earlier, you know, just the, the mindset of them. But it's been, you know, the relationships are relationship. That part never changes. So, you know, if you develop relationships with guys and, you know, um, at a place like this, you know, the school sells itself, uh, you know, the opportunity that presents itself for a lot of kids to want to come here to get back and be able to sell that uh, the kids based on, you know, being my alma mater, um, that's a great feeling. Um, but it, but it's still about relationships and just getting to know getting to know people and just, you know, uh, getting back into a flow of it. But it, it was a good experience the first couple weeks. New offensive line coach Justin Fry has worked together with Ryan Day before when they were both very young assistants at Boston College. Did that have any kind of an impact on his decision to make the jump from UCLA to Ohio State? You know, there's a learning curve when you take a new job, when you come into a new place. Um, and so having history with him... Um, you know, kind of growing up in the business for a little bit and knowing his vision and things that he had is going to make it a lot easier that way. Uh, so, and just excited, honestly, just to get back and closer to home for me and my family and then him running the programs. It was very enticing. Has he changed at all since last time? Nah, that's the best part about it. When I saw him in front of the meeting room, I mean, he's, he is who he is. He has the room, he has the kids, um, and, you know, they have him. Um, and so, yeah, to, to him to become a head guy and then take the head coach bill and change, no, I didn't see any of that, you know. Um, but it's all growth, you know, on the flip side of that. I mean, he's, he's taken that role on really well. It's been fun to see, you know, working for him right now. Is this a tough decision for you, Justin, or is this a pretty easy decision? Which uh, both. I mean, on paper, you look at it, you're like, it's a no-brainer, right? But in recruiting um, and development and a lot of these things, that's why college football is so awesome because it's still intimate with these kids. And so you're in the living room with their parents, you're recruiting him, you talk about what you're going to do, and then having four years of those guys, like those, you take ownership in your room. You're the general manager of your room, so those are your guys. So I say that now, they're, they're my guys, and you own all of them. And so on the flip side, those phone calls, and you know, obviously with the way media and stuff goes now, it was out quick, and not to be able to be in front of those guys was, that was also hard because those were my guys. Um, but 
then yes, you step back and once you make big boy decisions to come to an elite place like this where you can recruit elite talent and develop elite talent and be around some of the best coaches in the country. Yeah, I was I would just sprint it out here if he told me to instead of getting on the plane. With a new offensive line coach could come a new philosophy on the line. In previous seasons, the Buckeyes would just pick the five best guys and then figure out where to slot them in. Sometimes that led to lineups like the four-tackle alignment that you saw last fall. So how does Fry look at those kinds of decisions? Yeah, I mean, as you recruit and you look at your board, you want to recruit so many tackles and so many interior guys. Um, you have to have swing guys because of injuries and all those other things that go. Um, but I've always been in the philosophy, like, you have to play your five best, right? So if, you're, if the starting left guard, whoever it is, goes down, and the backup left guard is your ninth best guy, you're not going to put him and have your sixth best guy still sit on the sideline. So does that mean your right guard goes to left guard because the backup right guard is six? You know, there's some gymnastics there. Um, like I said, you have to have guys that can play, you know, multi-flex positions because of injury, because you can only travel 10, 11, or 12. You're not going to have, you know, those full guys. So, I mean, yeah, you, to manage the roster, you want to have so many tackles and so many guards, and you'd like those guys to play that way. But every once in a while, there could be some the shell game going on of moving an outside guy inside or an inside guy outside so that your five best are playing to give you a chance to win a game. Some of the run schemes that Fry's offenses ran at UCLA are different from what you've seen from the Buckeyes under Ryan Day. So was Fry brought in specifically to diversify the run game? Uh, we're going through cut-ups and watching stuff now. Um, like I said, that's, that's really more personnel-driven. So what your guys do well and how you can put them in the most opportune position to do that. I mean, I, yeah, my book of work, I've been able to do 22 personnel to 23. I mean, when Ryan and I were together at Boston College, we lined up with Andre Williams and we had three tight ends, a fullback and a tailback on the field and at the 50-yard line. So people would line up in goal line defense. But that's who we had and what we did, and so we got really good at that. Um, so, you know. That's a long-winded way to say, you know, not really a specific thing. It's just going to be a matter of seeing what we have, what they do well, and then how do we maximize that and window dress that and whatever the case may be getting into that moving ahead. Well, again, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And, you know, always nice to uh, kind of get to know some of the new guys who are sort of maybe just names or kind of vague ideas. Uh, get Getting to hear directly from them, you kind of get a little more of a sense for who they are in terms of uh, personality some of their uh, thoughts and philosophies as coaches and, and that kind of stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed that show. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow, of course. Um, and make sure you, uh, while you're waiting for tomorrow's episode, you can listen to some of our, our other great podcasts. You can find them wherever you're listening to this one. Buckeye Weekly, Tony Gerderman and I do that one. Around the Oval, Alex Gleitman does that one. Uh, Big Me Kickoff, Kevin Noon does that one. And Bill Green and Mark Givler do the Gives in the Bank podcast. You can find all of those great shows just by searching Buckeye Scoop on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this one on. If you have uh, 10 seconds, we would genuinely appreciate it if you uh, leave each and every one of our shows a five-star review. And uh, if you have time, a nice little uh, a nice little review in addition to that five-star rating. And uh, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop, hit that thumbs up button on this video. That will help other, help other folks find these shows. And then hit that bell that will help you find more uh, videos from us as they get posted because you get a little notification every time we post a new show, every time we post a new video, so you never miss a thing. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.